what if I told you that this image, and this one, and this, were all taken with a telescope that can make your current gear feel, well, a little behind the times. For years, we astrophotographers have been on the same quest for the Holy Grail, a perfectly flat field with tack sharp stars from corner to corner on a full frame sensor. We've placed together solutions with triplets, doublets, and a whole ecosystem of flatteners and reducers. We've wrestled with back focus, battled with sensor tilt, and spent countless nights diagnosing those frustrating, stretched out stars in the corners. It's a pain we've all just accepted as part of the hobby. But what if it didn't have to be? This is Altair Astro's 130 EDQ, and it's not just another refractor. It's an advanced quadruplet design, and it claims to solve the single biggest headache in astrophotography. Right out of the box, the promise is simple, perfect, full-frame performance without the drama. In this video, we're putting that bold claim to the test. I'm going to show you what makes this scope different. We'll take it out under the stars with a full frame camera, and I'll reveal the raw, unedited results that might just have you rethinking your entire setup. Does it live up to the hype? Let's find out. Hi everyone, so you join me in my observatory and as you can see this is Altair Astro's absolutely gorgeous quadruplet, the 130 EDQ. So it's a 650mm focal length scope, it's got a 130 aperture and its speed is f5. So this scope is completely unique. There is no other scope on the market with this size of aperture, being a refractor and having the speed of F5. So there's lots of other scopes out there and there's other quadruplets, but this one is unique. The finish on this scope is absolutely superb. Altair have gone to a lot of care and detail on it. Everything being CNC machined. I love this beautiful anodized blue. I think it's a really nice finish. Um, and you can see I've also got the quad um, EDQ60 on the top there, which I'm using as a guide scope. So when Altair gave me the 130, they said, take the 60 as well and use that as a guide scope. It will look nice on top. And I must say, it is a very, very nice looking setup indeed. Now I've had this scope for a little while from Altair and I've been able to run uh, quite a few nights of imaging and it's absolutely superb. Um, I'm a Newtonian freak, as you most probably know, if you watch my channel, my 10 inch Newtonian over there, my Orion Optic CT10 is without doubt my favorite scope. But this is changing my mind. I've never been massively a refractor person. I think the cost put me off a lot of the times, but um, the images and the quality that this scope is returning is absolutely phenomenal. It takes a lot for me to see uh, a sub come in and be wowed. And the last time that happened was with my 10 inch Newtonian, but this scope has done the same. It's absolutely brilliant. So the gold standard for images for many years has been the triplet with the uh, ED glass in there, um, three lenses so that we get red, green and blue all focusing to one point so that we don't end up with that horrible purple fringing round stars that we know as chromatic aberration. But the problem with doublets and triplets is we have to bolt another piece of glass on the back called a flattener or reducing flattener to get the stars at the edges and in the corners nice and round otherwise we end up with them being a little bit elongated because the design of the scopes cause a bit of a curvature now the quads fix this basically that flattener uh, designed from the ground up to fit this scope perfectly is already inside so we don't need to bolt anything on there. So we're getting the promise of a flat field but with up to a full frame camera. Now 
when we spend money on a full frame camera, we've spent a lot. So we need those stars to be good in the corners and at the edges. Otherwise, what's the point of us spending all that money on such a large sensor? The great thing that I can report to you is the stars are phenomenal from this scope and there is zero chromatic aberration and the stars to the edges and the corners are pinpoint. They're just perfect. Um, yes, the scope is not cheap, but then anything of this quality is not going to be. The guys at Altair Astro are passionate astrophotographers like ourselves, and that shows in what they've made here. This scope is absolutely beautiful. It's part of their quad range. I've been very lucky that I've been able to feature on my channel the 70 EDQ, and now I'm going to show you the 130 EDQ. I'm going to, when I've finished imaging with this one I'm going to take some single images with the 60 to show you just how good that scope is too and stay tuned because I know they have another model in the pipeline that just bridges the gap between the 70 and the 130 so keep your eyes peeled. The scope's got some fantastic features. We've got the CNC rings. These are very, very sturdy on a lost Mandy plate. So the mounting of the scope is really secure. I've got uh, an automatic focuser EAF fitted to the scope. So there's absolutely no issues with fitting automated focusing. And you can see on the back here, I've actually got a full frame camera and a filter wheel fitted. And on the scope, you've got a built-in rotator, which is super smooth and very secure. So you might have noticed last week I did a series of short videos where I was displaying an image and I asked you which scope took the image. No surprises, it was Altair Astro's 130 EDQ. So let's jump on Altair's website and have a look where you can purchase this scope from and what it's going to cost you. Okay, so jumping online we have the website for Altair which is altairastro.com there is a link in my description below for this. And we can see the scope here, which is the Altair 130 ED FX Quad F5. It's described as a flat field astrograph refractor. So the cost of this in the UK is £3,995. Unfortunately, our 20% VAT does put quite a lump on the price of the scope. International price is £3,329 and 17 pence so makes me want to move abroad and buy one um, the uh, scope is as i say you've seen it anyway it's absolutely beautiful so well machined um, it really is a, a beautiful scope to look at and also to use on the site here we've also got a spot diagram so if you're interested in those kind of specifics that's all included on the site scrolling down We've got some product information, most of which we've discussed. As I say, the scope is uh, uh, supports full frame imaging without any vignetting, and more importantly, sharp stars to the edges and the corners. It's also got a fast F5 focal ratio, and that's going to give you really great performance, even when using narrowband filters, uh, but most importantly, no chromatic aberration and that's down to the fact that we've got two ED optics in the uh, lineup of this scope and I know that each scope is carefully collimated and spaced for the lenses so that you get the optimum performance. 
There was a review done by my good friend Simon of Simon's Astro and there's a link to his video on here and that is definitely worth checking out. It's always good to get more than one review. Um, Simon will have a different take on it so definitely have a look at that. And it just goes through the types of cameras that can be used as say you really haven't got any limitations because it goes up to full frame no problem. There's many different uh, ways of connecting equipment and you can easily connect uh, an electronic automatic focuser, no issues whatsoever. So the scope is about 68 centimeters long with the dew shield retracted and at full extension, you're looking at about 85 centimeters. So not massive at all. So it's gonna fit into even an extremely small space or if you've got a small observatory, you should have no problems fitting this scope in. The weight of the scope, including the top mount and the tube rings and the uh, lost Mandy plate at the bottom comes in at 11 kilograms. Um, it's uh, nice and easy to carry with that top handle, makes it easy to mount up. And I've had it on my EQ6R Pro and that's ran the scope with absolutely no issues at all. So if you've got a scope of that uh, class or larger, then this scope, you're not gonna have any issues at all with guiding or uh, tracking to get some great images. So that's enough of me telling you how great this scope is. Let's actually show you how great it is. So I'm gonna put up an image now, taken with a one-shot color camera, full frame, the 24 CFX, so you can see for yourself the stars that this produces. So I slewed to the Eastern Vale, and I mean, the star field on this is absolutely stunning. And if I take you to one of the corners, you can see for yourself that the stars are literally pinpoint perfect. There is absolutely no misshapen stars there at all. We can go across to the other corner. And again, the stars are looking fantastic. And as you can see, we've got no purple fringing on any of the stars as well. And this F5 scope really does bring in the light. It, uh, it's a phenomenal piece of equipment. And the final image I got on the Eastern Vale was absolutely beautiful. What I like about the stars is they're really tight. Um, this has had no correction done to it, no noise correction, no blur X, no mucking about with the stars. This is straight out of the scope and camera. So obviously I did a stack of this and I will share that image with you, although you would have seen a small glimpse of it if you've been watching my shorts earlier this week. So I've had the scope in my observatory for a while now um, and I've managed to take a number of images and I'm gonna share them all with you so that you can see what this scope can do. I'm sure at some point Altair are gonna come calling. I've changed my number, but I think they know where I live. Uh, anyway, they're gonna come calling for the scope back and I'm gonna be very sad to see it leave. But until then, I will continue to keep taking as many images as I can and of course I will share share them with you. Um, it's been an absolute joy to use. It was so simple. I plugged it in, put the camera on and away I went. I mean, it was out of the box, perfect. So um, one advantage of this over my CT10, which I absolutely adore is you haven't got to muck about with things like collimation and you know backspacing and sorting everything else, else like that out. It's all done for you. Um, and uh, it is actually a really lovely piece of kit. I'm gonna be very sad to see it leave. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the content. If you have, please consider giving me a like, and if you haven't subscribed, consider pressing that subscribe button too. It'd be great to have you on board. But that's enough from me now, and until next time, uh, enjoy the images, please take care, and I'd love to wish you all clear skies.